Let me ask you about Liza. Uh, four years of, of all the things <laughs> she's been able to do. Um, how has she grown in her senior year, and, and how is she um, handling the pressure of just having the attention from all the other teams? Well, I think, you know, Liza has, has been the type of player that's always been looked at by the opponent as a go-to, and she's always been a huge threat. Uh, I think right now we've got some other people that have been able to step up and take some of that pressure off of Liza, and I think um, what she can still do, she can she can defend um, because she's such a high motor kid. You know, she's always going to play hard. I think she can rebound because of that high motor, and she's just so competitive. So she can do other things um, other than scoring. Scoring's just what she's known for. Yeah. High motor. I, I, I see a lot of her, of her and you. You and her. Are, were you that kind of a player too? You know, I don't know if I was as high motor as she is. To be quite honest with you, I don't know if I can claim it because her motor is on go all the time. Um, I may have been a little bit more calculated at <laughs> times. Uh, I, I had to play uh, near 40 minutes some games, so I had to be a little bit more efficient. But she is, you know, she's just the kid that can go all day, and again, one of the most competitive uh, players on the team. All right, let's let's turn to this to this road trip. Uh, you had the split here uh, early in the season, though, so you got a lot of work ahead of you, a lot of games ahead of you, and it, and it starts on the road and, and taking road wins. How critical is that? Well, I think getting wins, period, is hard to do, and I think um, you know you don't ever take those for granted, regardless of who you're playing or where you're playing. I know for us, we have to travel well. We've got to be able to go and stay focused when we're not in our home arena. Um, sometimes when you're in uh, JQH Arena, the environment itself can provide energy. It's not necessarily the case everywhere else in the Valley, and we have to provide our own energy during those moments. Illinois State, what do you know about these guys, and what do you need to do to win this game? Well, I, right now they're defending really well, so I think we've got to score, but to score I think we have to take, take high percentage shots. We've got to be able to share the basketball, make good decisions in our shot selection and in our tempo. And then defensively, we've got to be solid. I, th I think we've got to go out and do what we need to do. I, I know they've got some pretty good post players, so we've got to be able to keep the ball out of the paint as much as possible. One thing I'll ask you about, <coughs> I'm not really sure if we'll use it. Um, I, I heard Ben and, and they were talking about um, having something for Jackie uh, on there. Just your thoughts on the, the opponents kind of recognizing what Jackie's going through and, and that. Well, uh, Coach Gillespie, head coach in Illinois State, reached out to me. Um, one of the first, one of the first coaches that I heard from, and I thought she doesn't know Jackie personally, but I think just uh, everyone's hearts are going out to Jackie, and thoughts and prayers are up. And I think Jackie's not just a local phenom. I mean, it's a national thing, and so I think everyone in the Valley feels very proud of her having the Valley as her home. And uh, I think everybody just wants to reach out and, and show their support in some small way. And you guys are, are happy to take that and, and just carry that goodwill as well. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think, um, you know, one of the things that our players understand is, is Jackie's a part of this program forever. And when you walk out there and you're Missouri State, you're connected to Jackie, regardless if she's on the bench or not. You just are. And I think people understand that. And, I think everybody's a-okay with being connected with Jack. <laughs> Finally, can I, uh, I just want to ask about Bree Ellis. We were talking about how the pregame handshakes that she came up with, how she's at the end of the bench calling out opposing plays. What? How has she kind of developed a role on this team so quickly? You know, Bree has become a very important person on our basketball team. And she comes to practice every day with a great attitude. She understands what she needs to do. She really works hard to make her teammates better. And understanding that might mean, you know what, you get all the reps. She may pass her reps on to someone else. Uh, she'll be on the scout team. She does everything we ask her to do. And, and uh, I could not be more happy about her being on this team. I think she has been a valuable piece. And it, it, again, it's not going to be a, a pick up the box score and see Briella scoring 20 points a game. But what she does for us and, and how she – um, relates to the team in the locker room, I think is just really valuable. And I am just, I, we are blessed to have her on our team. And she spent high school going against six other D1 players <laughs> and a year away from, a year off the court game wise. I mean, what, how did she, did she come in here mentally ahead of other maybe freshmen would be? Uh, Bree is very mature. And the meetings that we had with her prior to her getting here, I mean, I can't even begin to explain to you how impressed I was with her and her maturity. She comes from a winning program, coming from Rockbridge, so she understands what it's supposed to look like. So she does have a really good understanding, a pretty good mental capacity of the, of the game um, and, and of the team and, and what a team needs to look like.